Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'kfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhim wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina man yahdi Allahu falamudillala wa man yudlil falahadiyala wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allahu wahdahu la sharika la Wa ashadu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Amma ba'd Yaqulu Allahu Ta'ala fi al-Qur'an al-Azim A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wa ala Allahi Fatawakkalu In kuntum mu'minin Sadaqallahu al-Azim All praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We glorify our creator and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings, his favors, and his bounties upon us. I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibadullah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran about an important concept that should be so much ever present within us during these difficult, challenging times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and put your trust, <coughs> and put your trust in Allah, if you are believers indeed. This concept of uh, reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, putting our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we see in the world today that there are Muslims who have demonstrated this concept with not only their actions, but it is embedded in their hearts in that uh, they, they, they make it part of their ibadah, part of their worship, that nothing happens except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever Allah wills will happen. And so they put their trust completely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that if we are truly believers, then always put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And in Allah, therefore, let the believers put their trust. And we see so often in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that as believers, this is a quality that ought to be embedded within us. In, in, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ Verily, the believers are those Allah describes them in the Qur'an. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ Verily, the believers are those when Allah is being mentioned, they feel it tremors. And when the signs of Allah are being rehearsed unto them, the believers, their faith increases. And the believers, they put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the believers are those who establish prayers and they give in charity. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is a, an important concept, reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we always need to make sure that we have that reliance, that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, he says in the Quran, وَيَرْزُقْهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ He will provide for the believer from where he does not expect. Allah will grant sustenance to the believers from places that they never expect. And whoever relies upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, Allah, is sufficient for them. When we look at our sustenance, Allah is telling us that He will give us sustenance from places that we never expect, believers. And Allah is sufficient for those who put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding us that He is Al Hay, He is the living. We don't put trust in those who don't have the same qualities like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people who are deficient. Or, you know, we don't put our trust in, in, in mankind in that sense. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, And put your trust in the ever-living one who dies not. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when everything vanishes, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is there and will always be there. So put your trust in the ever-living one, the one who does not die. And so we, we saw in the history of Islam, we saw from the beginning of time, we saw in the lives of the prophets, the companions, that, that, that reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they continuously would say Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil they, they would say or they said Allah is sufficient for us and he is the best disposer of affairs and, and we hear this being said so often among our Palestinian brothers and sisters. We, heard, we hear it being said so often in Gaza where the, the Muslims, they say, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for us and he is the best disposer of affairs. And so we need to make sure that we are also having this concept strong within us that yes, Allah is sufficient for us. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, when we look at people before us, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was placed in the fire and he found coolness and tranquility in that fire. He put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, hasbun Allah. Allah is sufficient for us. And he is the best disposer of affairs. This was Ibrahim alayhi salam. We saw in the battle of Uhud, when Kuffar, they came with a large army and 
they gathered such a large army that it was like uh, give up they, you wouldn't be able to fight against them Th this was the thinking of the people in in medina at that time with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but no prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he prepared and he put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see in all the battles, in all the, the struggles against the enemies of Islam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he always made preparation and then put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used to say, Allahumma, Munzil al Kitab wa muj real sahab wa hazim al ahzab ihzim hum one surna alayhim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would show that reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he would pray, O oh Allah, revealer of the book, disposer of the clouds. Defeater of the confederates, root our enemies, and help us overpower them. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, yes, he made preparation, and he he made sure that he call upon Allah subhanahu wa taala in the battle of Badr. He called upon Allah subhanahu wa taala. And he said, oh Allah, if this small group of Muslims are defeated today, there will be none left on this earth to worship you. So, so help us. This, this is the reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we saw Musa alayhi salam when he was taking his people out or from the confines of Pharaoh. There was that army behind them and the Red Sea in front of them. And the, the people felt that there is no hope. We will be overcome. We will be overtaken. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala documented in the Quran, we, we are told, Qala ashabu Musa inna lamud rakun The companions of Musa, the people of Musa, they said, indeed, we are to be overtaken. Musa alayhi salam, he had that reliance, that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, Qala kalla Inna ma'i rabbi sayahdin. He said, Nay, surely with me is my Lord, and he will guide me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Musa, Take your staff. And then when he hit the sea, it divided into two. There is the army and the Muslim the, or the, 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 the people of Musa, they had that safe path. This is reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is putting trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, if we look at Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he was migrating to Medina, he and Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, accompanied the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They hid in the cave, Ghar Thawr, for three days. And it is said that Abu Bakr, Radiallahu an said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
If one of them was to just look down, they would see us. And he was afraid. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Abu Bak, ma dhannuka bithnaini Allahumma, Allah thalithuhumma. O Abu Bakr, what do you think of the two with whom Allah is the third? It is said, in Allah, you know, that Allah is with us. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him, "It's not the two of us alone. Allah is with us. The trust in Allah subhanahu wa taala." And so Abu Bakr, radiyallahu, radiyallahu anhu, became a little more comfortable in terms of uh, knowing that. Allah is there with them. When Kuffar, they looked at the cave, they saw the web of a spider. They saw a pigeon laying, lying on its egg. It was impossible to them for anyone to get into the cave without breaking the spider's web or disturbing the, 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 the pigeon. And so here is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah helps you, none can defeat you. When Allah helps you, none can defeat you. And so we need to always put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in the Quran, in Allah yuhibbul mutawakkilin. Verily, Allah loves those who put their trust in him. And so we always, we, we, we need the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he tells us about the birds and how they are hungry in the morning. They go out and they come back in the evening filled. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Law annakum tatawakkaluna ala Allah haqqa tawakkulihi laruzittum kama yarzukum at-tayr taghdu khisaman wa taruhu bitanan the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if you are true if you are true in your reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you put trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the manner that Allah deserves it, in the manner that you ought to do it, then what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? He, Allah will grant you provision as he provides it to the birds. They depart in the morning with hungry belly. They don't have anything. And they return in the evening with their stomachs filled. This the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that we, we need to put that trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and, and put the trust in the way it deserves to be put. Not just saying I, I, I trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, but to be sincere about it. It's part of our ibadah, trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, reliance upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So whatever we see unfolding in the world today, 
my dear brothers and my dear sisters, do not be despair. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Despair not of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't think that the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not there. We, we cannot be people who want things instantaneously. Allah knows when He will provide and how He will provide. And so we should never doubt the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or we should never question when we put that reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we look at the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us that when you go to bed at night, put that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that you do, he used to make supplication continuously and, and saying that he puts his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught us that when we leave our homes in the morning, or whenever we leave our homes, he, he taught us to say, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. In the name of Allah, I trust in Allah. There is no might and no power but in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and we saw this so ever present in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Always putting trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, I, I just want to remind you and remind myself that yes, when we look at the world today and we look at the suffering of people, we look at people dying innocently, when we look at uh, the inhumanity in some people, when, when, we, when we look at uh, the suffering of people, not only in Gaza and in Palestine, but in all other parts of the world, sometimes we, we wonder, and uh, that trust that we have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we, we sometimes tend to waver, why? why and why and why and we ask questions prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said this uh, <clears throat> asked in that type of question law uh, you know uh, you know asking questions what if and what it that it opens the doors of shaitan because now we start questioning our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the help of Allah will certainly come and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that Nasrullah Qareeb the help of Allah is near Maybe we will see it in our lifetime. Maybe others will see it in their lifetime. But Allah will always help the believers. And we saw it in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We saw it in the lives of the companions. We saw it in the lives of those before. That the help of Allah did come. What is it that is required of us? We, we need to make sure 
that we stay firm in our belief that we not only say that Allah is our Lord but we also demonstrate that yes Allah is our Lord that we have that commitment that istiqama that steadfastness and as we look at our brothers and sisters in Gaza in Palestine we see that type of steadfastness maybe this is a moment for us to learn from others as to how much trust they have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for regardless of what happens to them they say alhamdulillah hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah and, and we hear it being echoed so often that's the iman that's the faith my dear brothers and my dear sisters we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and keep us steadfast we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in faith and iman we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthens our iman our faith we ask Allah to give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter and to save us from the torment of the hellfire. Akulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-mu'minin minat min kulli dhamb fa astaghfirun inna hu huwa al-ghafur rahim Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was salatu was salam wa sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in, with one Allahi alayhi mila yawmiddin, amma ba'd. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Jabir, may Allah be pleased with him, radiallahu an. He, he said that once we took part in an expedition with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it was time for the afternoon rest afternoon rest approach so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they were in a valley of thorny trees and he decided to take rest there the companions they went and they took their rest also and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hung his sword in the tree. It is said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after a little while he summoned his companions they came and they found a Bedouin sitting in front of him. At that time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to them, this Bedouin, this man, he stole my sword while I was sleeping and I woke up. The sword was in his hand, unsheathed. He had the sword out. And he said to me, the man said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who will protect you from me? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I said Allah three times. In another narration, it is said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allahu Azza wa Jal. At that time, the sword fell from the hand of the man and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam grabbed it. And he said to the man, Man yamna'uka minni, who will protect you from me? And the man said to him, Be good to me. The Prophet said, Atashhadu 
an la ilaha illallah wa anni rasulullah do you testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah and I am the messenger of Allah the man said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I will not but I give you my word I will not fight against you and I will not join with anyone who fights against you the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed him to leave. It is said when the man went back to his people, he said to them, Jitukum min indi khayrin nas. I have come to you or I have returned to you from the best of people. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, went to sleep, hung his sword, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But look at, in putting his trust, he could have, Allah helped him, and he could have done whatever he wanted to this man, but he let him go. And, and, and look at what this man said with regards to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is telling his people that I have come, returned to you from the best of people. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, as much as we put our trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, we, we also need to, to make sure that we understand that there are good people and there are bad people. And we cannot just label the entire world or one set of people as bad. Look at them in that way. They, they, they are good Muslims, they are bad Muslims, they are good Jews, they are bad Jews. They are good Christians and they are bad Christians in terms of their behavior. And so, as Muslims, we need to make sure that we do not harbor enmity and hatred within us for others, but we do as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has shown us that there must always be that concept of love and compassion and kindness. There must always be within us that willingness to forgive and to ask for the forgiveness of others. And so I want to remind you, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, and this serves as a reminder for myself that we, 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 yes, we need to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to always be prepared. You know, there, there are people who say, put your trust in Allah and there is no preparation. You, you heard the, the, the famous uh, um, saying, tie your camel. And, and we saw that in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was always prepared. Did he just decide to migrate to, 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 Med, to Medina and, and didn't make any preparation? Look at the preparation. He, he, he made sure that he left Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an to sleep in his bed so that he can give back the possessions of people that was entrusted to him, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Bakr, he did not go alone. Abu Bakr radiallahu an was chosen as his companion. Asma, may Allah be pleased with her. She was the one who brought food for them. And then there was a guide who mapped the route out for them. You see, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not just say, we are migrating, and we put our trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, but he made the plans. And the same thing he did in all the battles. He listened to his companions. 
Salman al Farsi dig a trench around Medina in the Battle of the Trench. And the Prophet وسلم, made that preparation. So when we talk about putting trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we also need to be prepared and then have that reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always remember to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ud'uni astajib lakum. Call upon me and I will answer your prayers. And, and, and we want to always be in a state of purity. So continuously ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Continuously ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you, to forgive the ummah, to for, ask Allah to forgive us. We need to ask Allah for that forgiveness because our dua gets accepted when we are in that state of uh, purity. The ones who will enter paradise, man Allah bi kalbin salim, the ones who return to Allah in that state of purity. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and help all those who are suffering in every part of the world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring relief to our brothers and sisters in Gaza, in Palestine. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to remove that oppression from them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to grant those who have been martyred from among them paradise, Jannatul Firdaus. And those who are sick, those who are wounded, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure them, to heal them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to bring relief unto them. Laqad amarin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fil Quran al Azim haythu qal, Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammad wa arda Allahumma an khulafaihi al arba'a Abi Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Alim wa nasitat al baqin wa bashirin bil jannah wa nsa'ir al sahaba wa nitabi'ina wa man tabi'ahum bi sanin la yawmiddin Allahumma aiza islam wal muslimin Allahumma aiza islam wal muslimin Allahumma aiza islam wal muslimin اللهم اللهم انصر عبادك المستضعفين في غزة اللهم انصر عبادك المستضعفين في فلسطين اللهم انصرهم اللهم انصرهم اللهم انصرهم اللهم ارحمنا وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين الذين شهدوا لك بالوحدانية الذين ماتوا على كلمتك لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتم علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباقي ذكم لكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله على نعمه واشكروه على آلائه ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قم السلام